when you've got this this nastiness all around, you've got no one showing you any kind of kindness, that leaves you very open to predators. There's people on there who are like, we, you know, we have to get her off this platform, we have to get her off all our platforms. You're gonna get her booted off for being mentally ill. You can't kick someone off the internet for being unwell. Being unwell is not a moral failing. Most of Eugenia's biggest haters, I would say, are recovered ED people themselves. And there seems to be this, this real feeling of, well, I got over it, so absolutely anyone can. And unfortunately, these people are unable to differentiate between the words acute and chronic. There are differences in EDs. There are people who sadly are incurable. She is not bulletproof and you are potentially driving her into the arms of people who are gonna be lovely to her, but for very, very, very creepy reasons. So hello you wonderful human of the internet and welcome to another eating disorder related video. Today I wanted to talk about one of the bits of controversy that's been brought up on TikTok regarding Eugenia Cooney. And when it comes to controversy in TikTok and Eugenia, largely everything comes from one account. It comes from one girl's account and this girl needs to just do something else for five minutes a day, I really feel, because her entire page is picking, 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 picking at every little thing Eugenia Cooney does. And it's honestly quite worrying how fixated she is. But I did think one thing she mentioned needed bringing up. And that regards the accusation from this girl that she believes Eugenia Cooney is now pitching her content at Anorexia Fetishist. And the main reason she cited for this was that Eugenia has started listing in the title of her streams what she's wearing. Although I think she only could think of two examples where Eugenia had done this, and one of them was a red Santa suit, which to my mind says more like, this is a festive stream. This is going to be a Christmassy stream. If you want to get in the Christmassy mood, I'm wearing a red Santa suit. It's going to be a Christmassy stream. That that would be my thinking more so than like, oh, it's fetishy. But I did think that the potential relationship between someone like Eugenia Cooney and Anorexia Fetishists Online was worth talking about because I just thought, well, duh. Well, duh. And I'm not saying, well, duh, because there's money in it and, oh, anyone will do stuff for money, right? I, I think it's it's far deeper and more devastatingly tragic than that, honestly. Um, when it comes to money, I think Eugenia is probably doing well enough to not need to pitch herself at fetishists. Obviously, her statistics have been declining somewhat because people are just tiring of the drama and all of this. And, you know, some people are trying to boycott, blah, 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 blah. So her stats have been declining. But nonetheless, I don't think financially she needs to pitch herself at fetishists. But obviously, you've got the fact... and. Mm -hmm. The reason I wanted to make this video was that this girl on TikTok was just not, it clearly wasn't clicking in her mind. And if it's not clicking in her mind, then it's probably not clicking in the minds of her subscribers. And honestly, they have a great deal to do with the fact that Eugenia might be pushed towards the arms of anorexia fetishists. Because to my mind, it's it's not about money. It's about niceness. Um when you're someone like Eugenia Cooney who is getting so much hate online day after day after day everywhere she turns you know even her own subreddit and obviously subreddits of influencers and YouTubers and things usually it is like the more cynical snarky side of the fan base because if it was like the genuinely nice side of the fan base well they would just have their discussions out in the open on that person's YouTube pages so the fact they have to like close the door on the youtuber and go somewhere else to have their little discussion is like clearly it's the slightly snarkier side of things but even so generally speaking it is that person's fan base and they are by and large like supportive if with a little grain of salt or saltiness <laughs> they're usually fairly supportive but eugenia's subreddit is just bilious at this point there's so much hate coming at her and it seems fairly obvious that she doesn't have the real life connections to, you know, unplug and have somewhere that she can go that's a safe space. That leaves you very open to predators, I think. And when it comes to anorexia fetishists, believe me, they will be so nice to their targets. 
because like, and I'm speaking from interactions with anorexia fetishes myself back in the day, back in sort of 2000, early 2000s, when I was at my lowest weight, the eating disorder forum I was on, there were two anorexia fetishists on there and they were open about what they were and people just let them be because, I don't know, we, we were young girls largely with low self-esteem and getting attention from these guys and you know we were young we had like our, our parents were against our eating disorders everyone was trying to get us out of our eating disorders everyone was trying to control us we wanted to just do our thing and be be stuck in our disorder and being the only thing that gave us any kind of comfort and feeling of safety and these two guys they were nice to us they were kind to us they were flattering to us and they didn't want to control us i talked to both of them by message now and then and i think if you're something like an anorexia fetishist, this sounds counter counterintuitive and weird, but you kind of have to learn how to be like the perfect gentleman to your intended, I don't know if victim is the right word, but target, prey. You have to learn how to be the perfect gentleman to them. Because if you're an anorexia fetishist, what you're attracted to is so, so, so rare. You can't afford to act like Andrew Tate. You can't afford to just, just be like, oh, I like her, I'll send her a dick pic. You can't do that um, because there's not enough of them. You know, when you find someone that you're attracted to, if you've got this, this very niche disturbing fetish, and you know that anorexics, generally speaking, do not have much of a sex drive, you know, starvation kills your sex drive, they're not, they're not going to be interested in you in that kind of way, probably. So you have to walk on eggshells and play softly, softly, softly. So these guys will be so kind and so um, just pleasant to talk to. You know, I could imagine them wanting to use her PO box or whatever and send her things. And when you've got people sending things like massive boxes of diapers to you, because they think it's really funny and really hilarious and it might upset you and it made her cry. And you've got that kind of thing coming to you, you know, in your house, from your P.O. box. And then you've got someone who just sends you, you know, something nice and a nice sweet letter and just, you know, is really laid back, really not pushy, really like just, you know, write back if you want to. I'm willing to be a safe space if you want to talk. Um, totally supportive of you, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think you're going to be quite vulnerable to that kind of thing. And if they you do strike up a relationship with this guy who just seems chill, obviously they're not going to come out about it and they're not going to be like, oh, you know, I am I want to lick your bones and stuff. They're not going to say this kind of stuff. They're going to come at it subtly, 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 and they're just going to seem like best mates. And again, kind of speaking from experience, if you're female online doing this sort of thing, and you have an eating disordered history, you do have some male followers that you have a very strong inkling, to say the least, are anorexia fetishists to some degree. You know because they follow other anorexics. They have made certain comments now and then. Nothing really boundary overstepping, but enough that, like, you're onto them. And these people know how to, like, up the ante so subtly that there's never a point where they go from like chill to asshole and you're like, no, fuck off. I'm I'm slamming the door in your face. It's always creepy, 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 creepy. So every little thing is like this, this, I hate the word, but it's like a tiny little microaggression. And you you can't really flip out over this tiny little microaggression. So you let it go and it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. And at that point, you're really cornered. Um tends to be how people like this kind of operate from my experience um so if they do start making requests kind of like oh could you um tell us what you're wearing in your live streams or could you wear a specific thing in your live stream and i'll maybe send you something really nice or you know we'll chat in the evening or blah blah blah, blah or i'll be on that live stream we'll chat a lot and i'll like pay you some money and things things that you you know like you know, she's not a dummy. She knows that there's going to be fetishiness in what people want from her. But, you know, when it's these things that are not really unreasonable requests and you are you feel like you're benefiting in the relationship to a degree, you're getting someone who is fun to talk to and who lets you be yourself and who isn't trying to control you and who isn't harping on about your weight and how you need to gain some and how you need to look after yourself and go into hospital and blah, 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 blah. Um, someone who takes a break from the usual shtick that you're hearing, 
of course you're going to be willing to potentially do something back for them. That's kind of how this relationship, I feel, could potentially build. Now, the, the disturbing thing about things with anorexia fetishes, I mean, you know, it, it's a disturbing fetish anyway. The disturbing bit is that it, it can, not always, not always, but it can overlap with having a thing for children too because they're into a childlike anorexic body. Some of them are into children too. And obviously the stuff that I talked to you through with the Fetishist Forum, it was vile and it was gross and it was really, really disturbing. The fact that they had stories about having anorexics kidnapped or women who weren't anorexic kidnapped and starved down to a terrifying weight and then forced to compete in grueling competitions with other anorexics while being led around on leashes by big muscular women and you know it was it was fucking dark and fucking creepy but i think it's worth remembering that this is not going to be how an anorexia fetishist is going to approach an actual anorexic this forum that we were in, what you were hearing was essentially that, you know, the locker room talk of anorexia fetishists. They didn't think anyone else was behind the curtain, you know. Um, but yeah, when they come at their intended target, I just know that they can come at you in, in quite a personable, pleasant way. And if you're someone like Eugenia Cooney, who everyone in, in the world is going to feel like is hating on you, someone who's being nice to you. Of course, of course, you're potentially going to do some stuff for them, uh, you know, and I hope that never gets pushed into anything really, really compromising for her. Because, you know, I have seen anorexic girls dragged into compromising, awful work that is not good for someone who has that kind of trauma already. I can't remember if I mentioned this in that video about the fetishist, but they had... Their forum had a whole, God, I think it was about 42 pages long uh, thread dedicated solely to Eugenia, including um, some very convincing nude uh, photoshops. I mean, it, it was it was Photoshop. Um, the guy even said it was Photoshop. I was trying to trick you there, but it was Photoshop. But it was convincing. It was convincing. Th these these guys have like a, a raging hard on for this girl already. And that is quite scary. So I did want to make this video largely because of these TikTok people who just seem to think that Eugenia Cooney is bulletproof at this point. Like she's bulletproof. She can take the hate. She can take the heat. She's not really even a human. She's got over the number of subscribers that stops you being human. You know how we, we seem to do this? It's kind of like the one death is a tragedy, a million deaths is just a statistic. It's kind of like that with influencers generally. Like, oh, you know, when they've got about 500 followers, well, they're, they're human, they talk back. But when they've got, you know, a couple of million, um, they don't talk back, so they're not human anymore. Everyone else is hating on them. Why can't I? They're not human anymore. Uh, they are. <laughs> they are human. Um it seems to go along with this cult of celebrity thing that I also don't understand, you know, that people see someone who's got all these statistics and all of this and they're not really human. So when I meet them, it's OK if I go ah in their face and grab my camera and just start, you know, click, 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 clicking away. Um, that's not how we behave around other people. <laughs> they're still a human and that's not what we do. But um, unfortunately, that seems to go the way it is. So I, I would like to bring home the point that Eugenia Cooney is not bulletproof. Um, and honestly, when I see her TikTok, I know there's there's people on there who are like, we, you know, we have to get her off this platform. We have to get her off all our platforms. You're going to get her booted off for being mentally ill. You're going to boot her off the internet for being sick. You, you can't kick someone off the internet for being unwell. Being unwell is not a moral failing. Um, you know, everyone... Oh, TikTok is so full of, like, mental illness... Uh, awareness and mental illness advocacy and it's fine to be mentally ill on TikTok everyone's everyone's there for you if you're mentally ill on TikTok unless they find your your personal symptoms grotesque at which point get off the platform your moral your mental illness is a moral failing get off no that's not really how it works this, this is why no one has banned her yet is because the grounds for banning don't make any kind of humane sense 
Um, but when I see Eugenia Cooney's TikTok, I think, wow, this is this is actually this looks much healthier for her, honestly, than I mean, I've not looked at the comments particularly that she gets on her TikTok, but it looks much healthier for her than her streaming and her YouTube. In that on TikTok, she's actually getting out and about, she's dancing, she's doing fun things. Um and I think things like dancing could be potentially something that would even drag her slightly out of her eating disorder because it's going to be something she finds hard to do. She's not going to have the energy levels to do it for long. And it might be like, hey, I could actually do this better if I, you know, if I kind of balance things up a bit. And I, I do think, I do think Eugenia Cooney has some sense of balance with her ED. The fact that she has stayed alive in the state for some time there is obviously a point that she's like you know the point at which i can no longer move and get out of bed i don't i don't want to reach that point um so you know there, there's that which is is encouraging and the tiktok things are encouraging but i think something else to mention at this point is that people don't seem to grasp the difference in severity when it comes to Eugenia's illness and perhaps the ones that they've been through themselves. Because most of Eugenia's biggest haters, I would say, are recovered ED people themselves. And there seems to be this, this real feeling of, well, I got over it, so absolutely anyone can. Or like, you know, I got over it and I had a friend who was, you know, so sick that blah, 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 blah. And you know, they got over it and they're fine, which means anyone can get better. And unfortunately, these people are unable to differentiate between the words acute and chronic. Um, many, 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 many people on earth have been acutely ill with an eating disorder. Being chronically ill with anorexia nervosa particularly is very, very rare. And at this point, I think Eugenia would pretty much undoubtedly be put in the uh, I don't know how you say it out loud, but the seen category, severe and enduring anorexia nervosa, which means that in terms of healthcare provision, in terms of recovery, it is more a case of looking at managing your symptoms and managing your condition and trying to give you the best quality of life you have rather than expecting a miraculous recovery, rather than expecting, right, we're going to put you inpatient and you're going to come out and you're going to be better when they see how long you've been sick for solidly, they are going to go, okay, so at this point, the likelihood of recovery window is narrowing for you. We're, you know, we're going to keep the door open for recovery. If you ever want to come in patient, if you ever want to try recovery, like, of course, hopefully your doctors remain open to it. But at the same time, they are going to treat you slightly differently. Once they slap that label on you of severe and enduring ED or severe and enduring AN, um, it's more about managing you and it's more about saying what, you know, what can we do to keep you alive? What can we do to keep you comfortable? Um, it's not palliative care, but it's it's managing a condition that may well be incurable. And this is what people don't seem to grasp when it comes to Eugenia Cooney, that there are differences in EDs. There are people who sadly are incurable, who go on and on and on and on and on for years and eventually succumb to it. Um, and those stories wouldn't exist if everyone could recover um, there, are, there are so many crossovers, mental health-wise and mental illness-wise, with eating disorders that make things more complicated. You can't compare your own ED to someone else's, <clears throat> particularly not if your own ED only ran for up to maybe five years compared to someone who's been sick for well over a decade. That That is comparing apples and oranges. Um, so I think I think people do need to start thinking in terms of maybe this is just her. And honestly, I think I think that is not really giving up on someone. That is giving someone space to be themselves. That, you know, my own initial recovery in my teens, I really put down to the fact that people did stop pushing me for recovery, that, that there was no help around. There was no help. I was getting no treatment. It wasn't happening. And at that point, it was like the safety net was removed because no one was trying to make me recover. And it was like, well, if I, oh, shit, I've got the reins. I can, I can run and run and run until I fall off that cliff because no one else is trying to pull me up. And at that point, I pulled myself up. And um, I think it can be this way with people that, you know, everyone trying to push them and push them and push them, they're going to push back. But the minute you stop pushing and you let them fall over on their ass, they often kind of go, oh, shit, now I'm on the floor. I don't want to be. Um, and they pick themselves up. So I don't think... 
Um, <clears throat> it's a matter of giving up on someone, just going, this is the way they are. Let them be. Let them be. Appreciate them for who they are. Let them be who they are. I don't think it's giving up on them. I think it's giving them space. And I think people need to do that a bit more. Um, and to bring it back to the point of this video, to realise she's not bulletproof. She is not bulletproof. And you are potentially driving her into the arms of people who are going to be lovely to her, but for very, very, very creepy reasons. Um, and also, if, if, you're, if your entire TikTok page is about Eugenia Cooney and you're stalking her streams and her stories and her YouTube and her Instagram and her everything and you're making videos every five seconds about everything you do that you think is problematic that she's done and you're telling her that it's terrible to be having any kind of contact with fetishists... Who is the fetishist in this scenario? Um, who is the one who is stalking her every move and making their entire living off picking her up? I would say that is quite fetishistic myself. TikTok girl, I'm not going to mention your name, but maybe move on a little bit, broaden your scope a little bit um, and try to broaden that scope out of hating other people. You know, don't just find someone else to hate as well. You know, uh, there, there are other things to do than hating other people, I think. Um, or, you know, we, we call it being, being you know, critiquing other people these days, but really it's, it's just hating in a fancy bottle, isn't it? Um, yeah. Anyway, this is, this is a giant waffle at this point, so I guess I'm going to shut up, but uh, maybe that was some, no pun intended, food for thought. Um, <laughs> if you have anything else you would like me to waffle about around the subject of eating disorders and things like that, please let me know, and um, I'm going to shut up and go away now. So uh, thank you for listening, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.